John chapter 15. Now this chapter, uh, I actually completely forgot to discuss this part of the chapter in John chapter 15. But in John chapter 15, it talks about Jesus Christ being the true vine. And then uh, we are the branches, see? Yeah, so this is like a creature or something, so I apologize for that. <laughs> so Jesus Christ, he is known as the vine. But what people are worried about is that in being the branches, which is referring to us, we could lose our salvation. So this is an infamous passage that's used to prove about losing salvation is John chapter 15 right here. So let's look at John chapter 15 and verse 1, and then let's discuss this. I am the true vine, and my father is a husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, notice he taketh away. So if you're a person who don't produce any more fruit, then you can lose your salvation, it looks like. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in a vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. So it's very necessary to keep abiding in Christ. Now, if you're not abiding in Christ right now, then it seems to show that you can lose your salvation and burn in hell. Because let's keep reading right here. Verse 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches, he that abideth in me and I in him. The same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the ware, fire, and they are burned. Wow. So it shows right here that you can lose your salvation, it seems like. Now actually, what was surprising to me is that I found there are three ways you can actually answer this. So there are three ways to actually answer this. So you don't have to think about that. It's talking about losing salvation here. So the first thing, notice that it's abiding in Christ, right? So if you don't abide in Christ, then you go to hell, right? Here's the thing right here. Look at verse... Four, abide in me and I in what? You, right? So here's the thing right here. So the first way to simply answer this is that the abiding is referring to our salvation, Christ. So if you refuse to accept Jesus Christ for salvation so that Christ can be in you, that's why in verse 6 you go to hell. See that? So that can be a first possible interpretation you can use. Now, look at Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. Well, I can get out of abiding in Jesus Christ, right? No, here's the thing, is that no matter how much you sin, Jesus Christ will always be in you. Once saved, always saved. When Christ is in you, He never leaves, despite of how much you sin. Ephesians chapter 4, and look at verse 30. And what? Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. See that? You can grieve God with your sin. But look at this. Whereby ye are what? Sealed unto the day of redemption. Look at that. You can grieve Christ so much with your sin. But guess what? God Almighty will never leave you no matter how much. He's sealed all the way to the day of redemption. Now, here's the thing. How is he sealed in you till the day of redemption? It's by trusting, believing on him for salvation. Look at Ephesians 1, 13 through 14. Look at Ephesians 1, 13 through 14. Now look at this right here. Ephesians 1, 13 through 14. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. See that? Christ being in you has to do with salvation. 
in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest honor of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. See that? So sealed to the day of redemption is when you trust and believe in Jesus Christ for salvation. It doesn't have to do with, okay, I have to keep my, maintain my relationship and walk with Jesus Christ, be holy, avoid sin. No, it's just simply believing. And when Christ is in you, he never leaves no matter how many times you sin. So that's one interpretation. But not only that, look at John 16 again. Okay, look at John 16 again. Uh, excuse me, why do I keep saying 16? 15 verse 2, 15 verse 2. In 15 verse 2, every branch in me, see that? So you are in Jesus Christ, that beareth not fruit. Notice, he taketh away, right? Notice it never said burning in hell here. It says that when you're in Jesus Christ, right? You're the branch that's in Jesus Christ, God will take away, which is very true. What does God do? What God does is look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 1 Corinthians 3. What's the idea here? Why, it's very simple. Remember, when you're in salvation, you have a chance to produce fruits now, right? When you're in salvation, you have a chance to produce fruits. But here's the thing, is that now that you're living a life, your saved Christian life, right? And then you refuse to uh, produce fruits. You know what happens? It's not that you burn in hell. It never said that. It simply said, he takes you away. See that? So he takes you, so he takes, let's say, this branch. He takes this branch away, and you can't live your saved Christian life producing fruits anymore because he takes you home to heaven. He kills you. He says, you can't live that saved Christian life anymore because you refuse to produce fruit. So I'm going to take you away. So look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And then notice in verse 17. Now remember, the Holy Spirit never leaves you when you sin, right? It never leaves you. You will go to heaven. You're sealed all the way to heaven. But the Holy Spirit... Because he's in you, he ain't going to put up with that anymore, so he can kill you. See that? Look at verse 17. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. See that? Because Christ is in you, the Holy Spirit is in you. And he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He won't cast you to hell. But when you keep sinning against God, he can't take it anymore. So he'll take you away, and you'll go to heaven early. He'll kill you. See that? Verse 2 never talked about hell. The only thing that talked about hell was verse 6, which we looked at. But at verse 6, we saw the basis of that. The basis is if you're not abiding in Christ. See that? But you are abiding in Christ, what? Ephesians 1, 13 through 14. It's in salvation. Now, that's the first interpretation. Now, the second interpretation, though, is going to be the more likely one. This is what I believe is the right one. Look at the book of Gal uh, Galatians. Galatians, yeah, Galatians chapter 3, Galatians 3. Look at the book of Galatians chapter 2, excuse me, Galatians chapter 2. Who's the author here? John, right? Now, here's the thing. John 16 would be more of a, tr uh, I keep saying 16, John 15 is referring to a tribulation doctrine. Now, why would you say that, Pastor? Because who's the author here? John, right? John's ministry, you understand, is toward Jews. Jews, and the time period he often talks about is end times. So this is referring to a Jewish context in end times. That's what John... 15 would be referring to. I almost said 16. Let's look at Galatians chapter 2 and verse 9. And when James, Cephas, and John, see that John, but what's their ministry concentrated toward? Who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given to me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we, Paul, 
And remember, Paul wrote Ephesians that you can't lose salvation no matter how many times you sin. That we should go unto the heathen. See that? Non-Jews, Gentiles. And they, John, unto who? The circumcision. Jews. Now look at 1 John 2. 1 John 2. 1 John 2. The book of John, written by John, and 1 John by John. So that should be common sense. So you're going to see a lot of similarities, and obviously with the writing of John and 1 John. That would make sense. Look at 1 John chapter 2. Now look at the time period that John is referencing towards. Verse 18. Little children, it is what? The last time. See that time period? But this is very plain. And as if he have heard that Antichrist shall come. See that? Definitely tribulation. Even now are there many Antichrists whereby we know that what? It is the last time. So it's Jews in the tribulation. So it gives that theme. But this makes sense now when you read, look at verse 24. Remember John 15 talks about you abiding in Jesus and Jesus abiding in you. Look at verse 24. Let that therefore abide in you. See that? Which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. See that? That abiding being in the Son. And look at verse 28. And now little children abide in him. See that? So this abiding would really reference toward a tribulation doctrine. That would make a lot of sense. Okay. Number three, I like number three the best though. So this is my favorite one. You can handle it in this way. Look at John 15 once more, John 15, and then go to Ephesians 4. John 15, and then go to Ephesians 4. This one I like better. Now look at this. You'll notice right here in verse 2. Verse 2 and verse 6 are the problems here, right? Verse 2 and verse 6. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that he may bring forth more fruit. Now look at verse 6. If a man abide not in me. So man does not abide in Jesus Christ. And let's refer that to walking in Jesus Christ. So in verse in point number two, we see the abiding here can refer to walking in Jesus, okay? Or living clean for Jesus. And then in point number three, we're going to do the same thing right here. Only point number one, we're going to refer that to salvation, okay? But in point number two and three, we're going to refer that to our relationship, walking in Jesus. That's what people are worried about, right? They're saying that I'm not walking in Jesus properly. I'm not avoiding sin. I'm not staying close in my relationship with Jesus Christ. So because I'm not abiding in Jesus, I must be the branch that's burning in hell. But look at this. Man abide not in me. He is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And notice, men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. Now, I'm giving these two fingers for a reason. It mentions man and man, right? This is really important to understand. Man who's not abiding, right, is burned. But look at this. Men gather them to burn them, right? This part, men you can tell is not the same thing with the man, right? Who's not abiding in, who's not abiding? This man, whoever, whoever these men are, they're not burned, right? It's the branches, this man who's burned. Do you follow so far? Okay, now, why are you pointing this out, Pastor? Okay, this one man here and then the second part of man right here. Because it's more simple than you think right here. This is the answer right here. The answer is, look at first, uh, Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. Didn't you know you make up of two men? Two man natures? Look at verse 22. 
that he put off concerning the former conversation, the who? Old man. All right? There's the one that's not abiding in Christ, right? Which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the who? New man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Here's the key right here. You consist of two natures here. You consist of an old man, old nature, flesh, And new nature, spirit. Now, which part is the one that's burned? This one, right? Which is the old nature, the fleshy deeds. And look at this. You are not burnt at all, but your fleshy works are burned. Boom. 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Ah, oh, that makes sense then. Did you notice at John 15 verse 6, it says, Men gather them to be burned, not angels. The one who gather them to be burned are supposed to be angels at Matthew 13. If that was referring to hell fire, it should have been angels casting them to be burned, not men. Why does it say men? Because it's referring to you. You're doing something with these fleshy old man deeds and you're casting them to be burned, which is the judgment seat of Christ. That's why I like this. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Did I say 2? I apologize. Chapter 3. I'm not on a roll today for some weird reason. Look at verse 12. Now if any who... Man, right? Now look at this. Build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. Every man's what? Work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it. Remember? Jesus Christ, he's going to, at John 15, he's going to take those works. Now look at this. Because it shall be revealed by what? Fire. There's your fire that's going to burn up the things that are not good. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, see that? It's going to burn. But look at this. He shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be what? Saved, yet so as by fire. See that? Despite of the fire, yet so as by fire. He's saved out of it. He doesn't burn him. The fire doesn't burn him. What does the fire burn? His old man part. That makes sense. The work is burned, not the man himself. The man himself, who's the real you, the real man? Is it your old man or is it the new man? Who's the real new? The new man, you, right? That's the real you. Your old nature is, that's why it makes sense why Paul says your old man is dead. See that? It's a dead thing. That's why they can burn. But isn't it interesting that this work that's burned, the old nature parts that are burned, in verse 12, what's the part that can be burnable? Wood. See? The Lord puts things there for a reason. So your, the parts of your old man is burnt away. And then your new man is what is retained right there. So you'll see right here that there are three ways to handle this. So in point number three, I forgot to mention this. This is referring to the old nature. Old nature's deeds. That's what's burned off. That's who the man is. So there are three ways to handle this with John chapter 15. And you can use either or to justify. But there's definitely no doubt that for the Christian gospel today, us Bible believers, once saved, always saved. There's no doubt about that because there are th these three things show that. And this also shows at point number two, that's why it's important to understand different salvation plans. See that? In the tribulation, there's no doubt. It is a faith and work system because you can't take 666 no matter how much you're starving and you can't buy or sell, that's a lot of work. 
So you have to keep abiding in Jesus Christ because it is the last time, the Antichrist you're, resist, you're resisting, as 1 John 2 told you, right? And Galatians 2 told you that John's ministry was focused on the Jews. So that makes a lot of sense. 